Hi, I'm Rick and today we're going to look at the eraser tool. There's actually three different eraser tools and you can see them if you go over to the toolbox and click and hold on the eraser until they all pop up and you can see we have the eraser tool, the background eraser tool, and the magic eraser tool. We're going to look at the regular eraser tool so let's click once on it to make it active. Once it's active, when you move your cursor over into the active image area on top of your photo, you'll see that it looks just like the brush tool icon. If you look up in the options bar, you'll see you can choose an eraser the same way you choose a brush, by clicking on the brush preview. And then you can just select any brush from there and close it. And it shows you how big the brush is that you chose. If you want to change the size, you can use this slider to do that and then you can also see there's a mode field here and that also has a pop-up menu usually when we see mode in the options bar it refers to a blending mode like multiply or screen or overlay but with the eraser tool it refers to the shape of the eraser I usually just keep it as a brush but feel free to experiment with the other two shapes Block can be useful for straight lines and corners. You can also change the opacity, which will determine the amount of color that gets removed or replaced by the background color. The way the eraser tool works, if you click and drag with it on the background layer, it will replace the area you drag over with the background color. Now that might have sounded confusing. I said background layer and background color both in one sentence. So let me clarify what I mean for those who might not know. When you open a photo in Elements, you will see it represented in the Layers panel as the background layer. And that's what I was referring to when I said background layer. And let me just uh, go up to Window and choose Layers. And you can see I have my background layer here. Now at the bottom of the toolbox over here, there are two squares. The one on the top is the foreground color and the one on the bottom is the background color. Right now they're set to their default colors of black and white, but you can click on them to bring up the color picker and change their color. I'm going to click on the background color square. From the color picker that appears, I'm going to click up in the upper right corner to choose this red color. Then I'll click OK, and when I do, you'll see that my background color is going to change from white to red. And you can see that here. I'm going to go back over to my Layers palette and make sure I click on the background layer so that's the active layer. And remember I said when you erase on the background layer, it will um, replace those pixels with whatever the background color is. So our background color, we just changed it to red. So I'm going to click and drag on my background layer. And you can see that it does indeed change those pixels to red. Now you might be thinking this eraser tool seems more like a paintbrush than an eraser. Well, let me show you how it works more like an eraser. I'm going to press the letter D on my keyboard, and when I do, Watch the background color change back to its default color of white. Here we go, D, and it changed back to white. D is the keyboard shortcut for setting your foreground and background colors to their default colors of black and white. And I'm going to undo this red that I painted on there. So I'll just go up to undo and click that. Now let's say there's a cat in the photo. Say hi to my cat, Hank. I don't really want Hank in this photo, so I'm going to use the eraser tool to erase him out. That works fine in this situation because the background of the photo happens to be white, the same color as our background color under the toolbox. And also, Hank's not touching the model. There's a space between the two. So I can just take my eraser tool and paint over Hank and it changes to white. But if I open this other photo 
which has a colored and textured background to it. And also Hank is over the top of the model and so there's no space between him and the model and now if I use the eraser tool to try to erase him out you can see I just end up with a white space uh, where Hank was before. It's actually pretty rare that I use the eraser tool on the background layer because of those limitations. But if we want to erase something off a transparent layer it can be quite handy. So I'm going to open this other photo where Hank is on his own separate layer and you can see that I can move him around. He's completely he's completely separate from the background layer. Now if I use the eraser tool on that layer it reveals the photo on the background layer because it makes it transparent. Let's choose the eraser tool. Make sure I'm on the layer above the background, the one that Hank's on. And now you can see that it changes those pixels to transparent and reveals the background layer which is underneath. The two main things to remember about the eraser tool is that one, when you use it on the background layer, it replaces the background layer pixels with whatever color the background color is. And two, when you use the eraser tool on a regular layer, it replaces the pixels to transparency. Next time, we'll look at how the background eraser tool works. Until next time, I'm Rick Peterson saying take care.